welcome everybody welcome to the first episode this is a very exciting time it's uh it's been a long time coming but we are we're finally here aren't we yes timothy and anthony are here in the house um we are obviously a part of the creative curiosity um podcast and we are here to try and disperse some of our life's knowledge you know whether it's useful to some people whether it's not useful to some people we're just going to enjoy this beautiful moment we have that we finally got to, Timmy. Six months. It six is, long yep. months, my Six friend, long months. Of preparation. Yeah. It's all been in writing. It's all been in uh, in the verbal, you know, in the verbal talks. Um, but it's good to see, you know, the physic- physicality of it. Yeah, for Finally sure. come to life, you know. There, there's so much beauty in, like, organizing something and then seeing it come to fruition. 100%. That's why it's I like, agree. you know, when you create stuff that you bring to life for yourself, it's such a beautiful feeling. Can't, uh, can't deny that. So, I agree. Yeah, here we are. Um, we have a special guest today, don't we? Yes, this, this beautiful human to the What's left up? of us, <laughs> the left of me, the left of you, Tim. <laughs> this beautiful young boy is uh, <laughs> my brother, Louis. He is um, obviously my brother, I just said that. Uh, <laughs> we've known each other for a long time, as you know. Um, I think we're, I would say, you know, creative counterparts in a, in a way. Mm. Um, we have very similar interests. Not all, not all interests are similar, but no. m- most, most of the time it's pretty... Mm. It's pretty sort of uh, linear. Um, and yeah, we just thought we'd, we'd bring Louis along because I think, you know, he's sort of really into the similar things we're into, like film, art, fashion, um, music, and just life in general. And I thought it'd be nice to uh, kick it off, bro. Beautiful. What a great intro. Thanks, Love bro. That. Very <laughs> bro, excited. Like that? I, I never tell that to his <laughs> face anymore. Like, I don't say that to his oh, face. I don't man. wake up and be like, I love you every day like that. But that was for the podcast. Yeah. That was beautiful. Thank you, guys. That was a beautiful moment. That was a beautiful, no, was beautiful, wow. beautiful moment. Beautiful. Well, um, beautiful I'm very excited to be here. First ever show. Yes. Um, yeah. Looking forward to it. Um, uh, because I yeah, I remember you guys talking about it, planning it all out, and now it's uh it's finally here. So I'm glad to be here. Perfect. Beautiful, bro. Um, yeah, we're just gonna sort of keep it as I guess as as conversation and informal based as as, as we can. Mm. Um, we'll kick it off. Um Perfect. No, it's um yeah, a bit of an introductory episode, just sort of uh getting a feel for it. Um and uh, getting to know a little bit more about each other, obviously. Um, so first of all, I'd, I'd love to hear about your journey, I guess, into how you sort of fell into the creative field. And um, I know you both work as teachers. Yes, that's correct. Um, so it's interesting to find out for someone who hasn't, you know, studied or, you know, mm-hmm. worked in the field from a very young age. It's interesting to see how you sort of fell into the love in recent years as well, you know? Yeah. For sure. Um, so... Um, can't really specify a specific moment, uh, but I would say growing up, um, we uh, as a family we probably weren't into the arts as much. Um, but then I think through school, primary school, then high school, um, I just enjoyed art classes and also. Um, I studied graphic design, not studied, but like I um, had to a uh, subject graphic design in high school that I enrolled in and then kind of just enjoyed that a lot. Yep. Uh, and then through that, I joined this forum, funnily enough. <laughs> It's a nerdy the forum. That's like nerdy so, that's like full out. like 2012 vibes, man. Yeah, I mean, I like full no like 908 vibes anymore. anymore. Yeah, like <laughs> incredible. So, yeah. Um, Growing up, loved wrestling. Um, the whole family loved wrestling, we used really. To f- yeah, we used to love it like, so much. Yeah, yeah us, um, obviously Jason, brother as well. Cousins. Cousins. Um, like yeah, cousins as well. We would go over, to their houses. Yeah. Like, Brought the watch, family together. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Watch pay-per-views and then like record it and then watch it again. I don't know. Just all this <laughs> weird stuff. But it was fun. Um, and then, yeah, I joined a f- wrestling forum. Um, and then from that, there was like a graphic design section so it's just a bit of fun but you make like you can create stuff on photoshop like banners or something where it includes wrestlers mm. and so people from the farm will request that and you make it for them um so i would do that um, so i learned how to use photoshop yep um and then through that there was also also like competitions that you could do just like different topics could be whatever really mm. and then you could make like bigger designs and then send that through so it's just yeah, a bit of a hobby to be honest with you yeah um but yeah I, I think in the past we've spoken about how 
you know, why do people like certain things or what engages them in that? Mm. And it was really hard to know why you like something. Yeah. Mm. Cause you're like, yeah, well, that's pretty interesting. Like, why do you like movies or why do you like this color or why do you like that song? Mm. It's almost like a, I would say it's almost like a, a preset, you know, instructional rule book that you have that you just identify with, but you don't even know why you identify with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in mm. a way where it's like, some people, for for instance, like some people are just really into specific, like a, a type of music or a genre yeah. of music. And then we, we know we like it for what it does, but we're not born knowing why we like that music. Like I think for however long I'll live, I'll never be totally into country music mm. or like death metal or heavy yeah. metal. And it's not a knock on the genres. It's like for some reason, I just, my, my brain can't process any... I guess joy or um, yeah, you can't really connect yeah, like to I can't it or connect yeah, to you it. don't resonate with it. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. and that's it's such interesting. an interesting like concept, right? Mm. But yeah, but yeah. Um, obviously, our dad is into films. Like mm. he, he grew up liking movies. Yeah, music, uh, music as well. Like he loves pop, and he loves like uh, movies like Rocky. Like mm. Suicide Salones is well, there's like eighties <laughs> like you know power power yeah, ballad yeah. music and like those sort of power movies yeah it was inspirational kind of stuff so we grew up watching movies yeah um because he was really interested in them and mm. liked them so that kind of got us into it as well I guess maybe if he didn't uh, enjoy movies then maybe we wouldn't but yeah there's so many influences I guess hundred percent man in mm. your life through your journey <laughs> and some of those influences you don't even not really necessarily aware of. Yeah, you know, I think we, we are always always very quickly to label this as your inspiration, but I think mm. every like um, this is a bit like philosophical here, but I like going go tangents sometimes, guys. For our viewers, please like this. Please, thanks. <laughs> like. Um, so like you, <laughs> you you might find that like sometimes, um, you, like everything is an inspiration. Like there's no yeah. I think we're quick, we're always quick to label it as like music or a musician or a or yeah, a film. Yeah. Or like a moment in your memory or something. And while they are there, it's like, I think everything plays a part. Yeah, in a it way. does. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I mean, as a, as a whole collective, things work together and they they are exactly that. Mm. Yeah, exactly. That's that's cool. Thanks for touching on that. How about you, Timmy? What was your um, endeavor into the arts? Because you're, you're a bit more, I guess, versed in the theory aspect of yes. a lot of these fields. Gone yeah, to uni I guess it. so. But I mean... It's interesting because I feel like everyone has their own sort of path. Like I hear this conversation about should you go to film school or should you not? Mm. You know, I feel like everyone learns or grows in different ways and there's benefits for both. But um, yeah, I always feel like the practical hands-on side of things is always just the way to go. So whether that's actually in the classroom studying setting or whether that's just on your own figuring things out, playing around, I feel like that that's the best way to do it. Um but yeah, grow, growing up, um, yeah, my I feel like my family wasn't a whole lot of creative similar to yours. I mean, my uncle was an architect. He was a draftsman, so Ooh. he did have that side to him. Nice. Mm. And then, obviously, my parents did a lot of traveling, always took a camera everywhere. I have inherited some of my mum's uh, film cameras, which oh, I currently nice. use, so they're, pretty, they're cool. pretty cool. And... Um, but yeah, I sort of found my own way through it all. I'm um, growing up through high school, and then again, similar uh, studying, you know, studio arts. I I looked into photography, and from there, I ended up doing a bachelor of photography for three years, which I finished a couple of years ago. So hey, 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 and then hey, <laughs> hey, 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 Timmy, hey, hey, and then hey, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Sorry, I'm gonna be really excited. I'm gonna be I know, bro. Love yeah. that. Um, but yeah, so from since I've graduated, I've sort of. Yeah, experimented a little bit. I've just been doing the rounds, trying out different things. Like I've been doing a little bit of animation. So, uh, and also sort of finding my way through to the film area as well. Um, I don't know. I just feel like within the film, there's just a, such a big process behind it that I think I have more admiration for it. Mm -hmm. oh, there's, some, there's something about it that just, when, when you see a film and all the components and it all just comes together, it's such a big, such a big thing. And similar to like this podcast, it's such uh, so much planning mm. and pre-production, and you're seeing it come together. Mm. I mean, it could be the same for all art, but in my in my opinion or my perspective, that's just yeah the direction that I fell into. So that's um, cool. so yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. That's um, cool, man. And uh, not not too sure what's next. <laughs> I'm, a bit, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit stuck. But yeah, yeah. Hey, we're <laughs> all know, stuck. I, yeah. I'm, I'm what are we actually doing, stuck. bro? Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here? 
<laughs> Why are we talking? Why, Why do we talk, bro? So. Why do we live? <laughs> Why do we eat? <laughs> what are we doing, bro? What's uh, important? Too many questions. So many questions. <laughs> anyway, so many tea? questions. So oh, yeah, T. So, um, yeah, that's me. Um, that's, that's you. Yeah, so hi, guys. I'm Anthony. <laughs> I'm 28 years old. Um, so, yeah, getting into the creative field uh, for me was very similar. I obviously lived in the same household. Yeah. But I just remember, like, my first earliest memory was, like, playing... Because we, we used to live in Cyprus back in the day. Mm. Like, I just remember, like, playing Greek musicians on a, t- on a, on a tape player, you know. Mm. Uh, on, like, this little boombox we used to have <laughs> where we used to live in the hills and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I just like, that was my first, I think, connection with any art form, I think, in general, mm. was music. And that's, an, you know, music and movies, for me, are interchangeable. Mm. I love both so much evenly, you know. Um so that was the first introduction. And then, you know, growing up, uh, as Louie mentioned earlier, a lot of those classics, the Rockies, the, the Lethal Weapons, just those, you know, we had a lot of those action heroes, we yeah. were <laughs> we're in love with them, man. Like yeah. your, your Mel Gibsons, your Schwarzeneggers. <laughs> different, different kind of actors back then. Yeah. Especially the action heroes, like mm. Schwarzenegger and then, you know, Rocky, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, Bruce Willis. Just different, wasn't it? Um, I think it was so. more about like... It wasn't about their chops, acting chops, you know, like nah. it, it wasn't a walking Phoenix killing the Joker. It was Joker. more like charisma. It was charisma. Yeah. It was just oozing, I'm a boss, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm juiced, I'm jacked, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, just I'm, I'm a boss. Life. Yeah. yeah I'm not saying one word and everyone's hinging on one word that he's saying. <laughs> the audience like, whoa. And rightfully you know. so, really. Yeah. A hundred percent. What a go. So like, yeah, th- th- those were the moments, you know, of, of, of recent memory that I can uh, think of being as sort of impactful mm-hmm. as the person I am today. Yeah. Sounds a bit cheesy, but like, it's kind of true. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, recently though, like in the last five to eight years, that's, that was a really random metric. What the fuck is five to eight years? <laughs> Sorry, five to 10 years, I would say. That was five to eight. Five to eight. That's Maybe a weird metric. Specific. Yeah, I know. That was random as. Um, so yeah, five to 10 years, I got really into films. Like where you actually, where I sat, would sit there for hours on IMDb or, you know, other film sites just researching movies and like who directed this, when did they direct that? What year did this come out? Mm. What who's what's this guy got coming up like we do now? Mm. You know? But that was the first time um, you know, I really, really got into it and it's almost a decade now where I've really, really been into it. So mm. it's it's a beautiful, beautiful pathway that teaches you so yeah. much. And then we became teachers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know where <laughs> we that came from. Talking about how we liked movies and the art and stuff. But yeah, like I guess with teaching as well, you can be fairly creative in a way. Yeah. Um, it 100%. is different, obviously, to like yeah. making a movie or something. Oh, for but, sure. Um, but yeah, I don't think we... I think maybe because our love for film came a bit later mm-hmm. in life, maybe early 20s. I think when I was studying to be a teacher, that's when I really got into movies. Mm. I would just watch... I remember you just watch heaps in your rooms. Like yeah, hours. I just watch movies... Was it sort of like an escape from the, the stu- you know, the study and everything? Yeah, Do you it think was. So? Yeah? Just to like, you know, take your mind off that. Yeah. And then, because I don't know, when, I, when I'm watching a movie, you kind of, well, most of the time you get really into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're really enjoying it. Mm. <laughs> um, but you're not really thinking about anything else most of the time. You're mostly thinking about the movies, which is a hard thing to do as well. Um, but yeah, I think... Because I was studying and then I got really into movies. I'm like, oh, well, I'm doing this course. Mm. I still really enjoy teaching. Yeah. Passionate about it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting. Definitely. <laughs> what a, so we've all had these existential journeys. <laughs> yeah. Into the interview. In, in, in these own, but different, different, but sort of the same as well. You yeah. Know? It just found us. It found our souls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it found our souls. Oh, that's really deep. Man. I know, bro. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I just get philosophical. That's that, what this that is all a, about. Yeah, Don't that worry. was the most super deep thing I've ever <laughs> that's said. That's all right. Life. I'm very <laughs> deep, guys. I'm very deep. Please, <laughs> like. Yeah. I'm deep. I was going to say. And now we've um, obviously worked together to make a few short films. Yes. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. Um, so, we obviously, because we like watching movies we love that mm-hmm. uh we thought why not actually start making short films as a hobby kind yeah of thing yeah because you know mon- mundane life nine to five kind <laughs> of job teaching mm. um you kind of it's it's fine but you need something to do yeah i need that out um, there eh? yeah and whether that's sport or like making something or drawing or painting whatever it is mm. so yeah we've made a few short films um mm. It's been a bit of a slow process, but um, yeah, we thought we'd start with short films first and see how that goes. Um, and I think because, like we're talking about, you know, are you going to study or are you going to 
start actually doing it. Mm -hmm. So we just thought because we're already teachers, probably going to be harder to study film. Yeah, it's a big commitment. Um, for it sure. is a big commitment. Yeah, and it's lots of money as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dude, our courses, like, your course wasn't cheap, eh? No, I won't get into that. Won't get into that, but, <laughs> you know. but yeah, like, it's pretty expensive as well. Yeah. So we thought, you know, let's just give it a go because I don't know. I always say like people always say you learn best when you do it as well. Mm. Um, it's not saying studying doesn't help. It definitely mm. does. Yeah. But yeah, we've made a few short films. We've obviously learnt a lot mm. um, about cameras, you know, about lighting, everything, lighting. <laughs> Still learning. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, never, you, never you, ever gonna, you never learn everything, eh? Oh, no. Nah, you're obviously, obviously Bro, always That's learning. so cool. That's the beauty of it, though. Yeah, yeah. You just keep going and going. Mm, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, and we're, we've we made one. We're just editing at the moment. Nearly finished that. Um, so It was like made deep in isolation. So like, yeah, it was reflective of that. And I just remember like, sometimes I watch it back, like through editing, I'm just like, man. That, that was a cooked out of time bro like it's almost yeah, hard to revisit and finish really, it because yeah. it's like because you're just at home all day and draconian draconian laws home, were yeah. in and stuff it was hectic mm. but um yeah it's uh nearly done it'll get done soon <laughs> yeah really soon <laughs> then we get time but it's yeah almost no, there. It's, it's been good it's been a good experience mm, sure. i would say and um, just like making a three and a half minute sh film takes forever like yeah you, bro, you, you how gain, many shots yeah. You realize how long... So if you're making a blockbuster, that would be a long process. I know there's a lot of people, hands on deck kind of thing. Um, but imagine that. But yeah. it's pretty crazy how you can think of such a big idea and then execute it. Yeah. You and always, how long that would take. Yeah, exactly. You, know I mean? you always see the end, end product, but yeah. how many hands are behind the scenes? Oh my you know, God. You don't know. But don't know. that's why, yeah, I've been similar, trying to make some shorts here and there. Yeah. Definitely not rushing into... You know the process. Oh, yeah. I'm taking it's my time. So hard. Yeah. But as you just said, yeah, the work behind it, Man, it's insane. It's all it's all in the pre-production though. Like 100%. if you mm. if you plan it out well, if you set your scenes right, you scout locations, all that sort of you know pre-production stuff. The shooting and the editing, it should flow. But mm. yeah, if you don't get that thing from the start, it can be a lengthy process. Even if you're not sure about what you want at the end as well, if you don't have a clear mm. a clear pathway or a clear up. end result, you know, it's, yeah, it's very ongoing. But yeah. Dude, your, your animation stuff takes ages too, yeah? That one oh scene yeah, you were doing yeah. about Lala and the Ember, you are doing that for yeah, a while. Yeah, that was just, Dude, that yeah, was, that was ages. It was just for, you know, practice mucking around. But I was working on for hours and hours and just trying to fiddle around with it mm. and get the hang of it. Mm. But you work on it for so long, all these little sketches, and at the end of it, you got like two seconds of footage, and you're <laughs> like, circle, well, whoa, man. <laughs> all right, how long is this going to take? Is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is the pursuit of the arts worth it? That's the question. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> or do you just sell your soul yes. to the, sell your soul to whatever to it is? To the process. Just, just to like, the process. You know what? This, is, this is me. <laughs> this is I'm, 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 yeah, I'm resigned to what I'm doing right now, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's part know, of the process, isn't it? Bro, it's, it, it definitely is. Yeah. We also want to touch quickly on like the the process of, like the change from like VCRs, DVDs, to like the modern like film age. Obviously, we grew up in the nineties. You and I, Louis, probably more so than Timmy. Timmy was born a bit later in the nineties, yeah, but definitely, we probably experienced it a lot more um, vividly. Like the the yeah. blockbusters and video easy vibes. Do you want to just quickly touch on you know your I guess views and memories of the way we perceive or consume media now as opposed to the way we used to consume it? Yeah. Well, obviously, I was born in born in the nineties, early nineties. Um, we grew up watching movies on cassette tapes, mm. uh, video tape. So it's very different to now. Um, so they didn't have DVDs back then, so on and so forth. Uh, so I feel like these days there's so many, um, so many ways to access films and there's so many films out there that it's kind of had a big impact on the quality of films, I feel. Uh, mm -hmm. There's definitely great movies out there. Yep. I'm not saying there isn't, but there's probably a lot more that are not as good as you know as they used to be because of how many are being made. You yeah. know, platforms like Netflix, like there's so many choices these days. It's so stressful to pick a movie. Yeah, right. And I feel like people just make them so they can get them on Netflix or whatever it is. Doesn't matter. Netflix or something else, and you get it on there. People watch it. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but 
it's just easier to do that mm. i feel like and it's there's probably not as much thought put into a lot of the movies that come out yeah so you think it's a bit of a it's becoming a little bit oversaturated and a there's, little bit there's yeah, little, yeah. There's so much choice yeah it's that, almost too much and choice. it's and it's like a little bit more easier i guess to release therefore yeah there's a lot more out there yeah which, exactly which, you know is resulting less quality but you know at the end of the day, everyone sort of connects to different things. So and that's it, yeah. But from your opinion, that's what you think, yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, growing up, I've obviously what cassette tape, uh, video tapes. We've got mm. collect DVDs and then Blu-rays, and now you don't really need to do that anymore, kind of thing. You, you know, we used to go to Video Easy or mm. Blockbuster. That'd be pretty exciting, you know, just to have that experience of going there was kind of part of that whole it wa- yeah yeah enjoyment of watching a movie definitely um but now you're kind of just at home and you just find something on the tv uh, which is fine but it's not the same experience i don't feel um, i agree with you man i remember just th- i remember the smell of like you know talking about yeah. senses and stuff now like the smell of walking into a blockbuster and like the, the 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 packeted popcorn and stuff you can smell it yeah and like you know the whole process of get by of grabbing the dvd and like, you know, the person behind the counter finding the tape to put it in for you or the DVD to put it yeah, in for you. Yeah, that's it. That whole comprehensive it's experience, different. you yeah. know. It, it's definitely lost. I feel like that's what the filmmaker's intentions are as well. Mm. Like when you're making a film, you want people to actually, you know, embrace the actual process. Yeah, 100%. And by, you know, getting out, getting into your car, going to the cinema as yeah. well and watching the film, that's what it's what they want. It's, it's, it's yeah. the best. You can't beat it. But yeah. um. There are pros and cons to all this anyway. As you said, like, there is more out there. People are getting more opportunities, but I just hope that the cinema doesn't die. I just think it's... I, th- I, look, <laughs> I, I doubt just, it will, I, I, Like, you know, yeah, the, the way we always... Either. I think we always look in retrospect with rose-tinted glasses. Like, I think that's a... That's like a very human quality. We all do that, yeah? Like, yeah. Because I think... I was looking at this video that day, and I'm getting a bit, bit deep here, but, like, it's on this YouTube channel, and it talked about how, like, we perceive the past as a in range tinted glasses because we understand how all of those problems we had back then resolved and like it, it, we, we know how things ended and they mm. ended positively and we survived whatever we were surviving whether it was something challenging or hard but mm. now we're, we're living in this moment right now and i bet you in 10 years we're going to look retrospectively on this moment yeah. and be like this was the moment this is the golden age of films where yeah, you're on yeah, netflix yeah. or prime amazon prime whatever it is yeah you know what i mean so yeah. I, I get I, I think i get what we're saying even though i still believe it was a better process I think yeah. that idea of those rose tinted glasses are always going to be present whenever we're looking at things in retrospect. Yeah. And I you think p- maybe just cause you're, you're younger, like things are so mm. new and like exciting. That's, like a, re- that's a good point as well, actually. Like that nostalgia kind of feeling. Mm. I guess kids growing up these days, like that's exciting for them finding something on Netflix or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's probably, yeah, it's different. You're right. I think every time we think about the past, like, Oh, it was such a amazing time, this and that. But yeah, I guess, but I don't know if I would look back in 10 years from like in 10 years uh, and think that, you know, this was the time that mm. excited me about films or like had access films or something. Mm. Maybe I'm talking more and I said a broader sense. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think, I think I know what you mean. And I think mm. people's idea of like what, what's like his idea of open-mindedness and curiosity is a little bit different now as well. You know? Yeah. How How would you... Because obviously you're both teachers and you're working with, you know, mm. the younger generation coming up now. So how would you compare it? Maybe take a trip back to memory lane to when you were <laughs> uh, a young little boy. Oh my God, <laughs> that's so nice. Yeah. You're making me a think of retro- Bro, stop making yeah. me think in retrospect, bro. Yeah. What a dog. Yeah, <laughs> maybe think What a dog, bro. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, uh, yeah. So go back to that time and maybe think about how you saw this idea and compare them to, you know, gen- generally speaking. Yeah. To how, uh, you know, the younger generation are coming up now. And sort of that yeah. mindset. Yeah, it's it's a bit different. Obviously, being a teacher and teaching kids who are like around 12, 11, 12 years old. Yeah. You kind of get to, you get a bit of an insight on, you know, what they watch or what excites them. So, yeah, these days, like social media is obviously bigger than ever. Yeah. And it's probably just going to keep going like that. Yeah. Um, so, they... Once again, like things like TikTok and, you know, you can even make films on TikTok. Mm. Mm. Like that's some sort of entertainment for a lot of the kids these days. So, um, and like you question whether 
their atten- attention span is great because it's really short videos as well. Mm. Um, and then sometimes when I'm playing videos in the class, like a short film, you might like do a bit of a study or something. Like, you know, the animations? Yeah. yeah you might analyze something from it. And then some kids are just not even like, after five minutes, they're just like tuning out. I'm like, wow. geez, you're like 11 years old. Yeah. And you're not even, <laughs> you can't even, you, can't even you don't even have the attention span of like a prep almost. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's all negative, but yeah. I feel like attention span isn't as maybe as strong. Like, do you remember as kids watching a movie at school? would be like the most exciting that was, thing. That it, was, it was life. the highlight. Yeah. You always look forward to those yeah, days. Yeah, You all get together <laughs> get in the that, classroom. Um, and just watch even the TV the, trolley. The TV trolley, yeah. <laughs> yeah the just TV around. trolley. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not saying like they don't enjoy watching the short films. They do, but it's interesting to see how a lot of them just lose that kind of concentration after a while. Mm. Um, and yeah. that's probably because they have access to it so easily mm. um, these days. But yeah. That's pretty much my experience from it. Feels like there's a lack of, I think the young generation lack of there's a lack of presentness in what they're doing. You know, they don't they can't connect with things as I think strongly anymore yeah. because of like you said attention spans because of the sheer amount of options that they can be entertaining themselves with. You know what I mean? Like that that's what it feels like to me. Would, would you agree mm. in a way? Like there's just so much that they can do that. Why would I pay attention for top five minutes to something I don't find? that exciting yeah. if I'm, i find it remotely boring i'm going to change to something i can just quickly yeah. find so much joy in and i guess as a kid you want to be doing something a lot of time you want to be entertained mm. so i guess it's like a yeah it's like being a child and growing up i guess yeah we can't generalize too much but just from my experience maybe from our experience being as teachers mm. it's a bit like that <laughs> question would you say most people are creative you reckon like in, in, Most in people. the sort of broader sense, if we're talking um, about creativity as a whole, what, you know, what's sort of your take on the idea that most people are creative or are no. creative in yeah. their own little way? Well, I think most people are creative uh, because, um, and I think we've spoken about this before, it's when you kind of think of things in your head, like you're kind of creating things in your mind. Mm. So you're, you're being creative, right? Um, in that sense. So I think you can be creative in different ways. Um, but yeah, I think everyone has some creativity in them. Um, obviously, there's a bit of a range, <laughs> you know. Um, definitely, yeah, definitely. But yeah, I think mostly most people are creative in a way. What do you guys think? Yeah, I would agree, Timmy. It's interesting. It's, it's it a, is tough, an interesting a hard question. question. Um, Answer it properly, bro. What are you doing? Yeah, what man. do you mean? Answer I the answer question very bro. well. Oh I my think. god, bro! Give us a, like a, I want a clear answer and stuff, please. I want to know how to live my life and be creative, bro. <laughs> so you can't understand um, English, bro. That's so harsh, bro. Oh my god, bro. Please, <laughs> Timmy. <laughs> Timothy, um, speak Timothy. Yes. Uh, back on track. Uh, okay. Well, um, yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, I feel like. Yeah. Deep down, I feel like we all we all have that creative. Um, element in our head. But I feel like some some people maybe choose to uh, do something with it, I guess, or maybe they maybe they sort of take in take in those little moments a bit more. Like we were speaking about this, we've sp- yeah, had this conversation before a million times. Um, yeah, it, it million, always comes three up. Three million, four um, million, five million, six million. <laughs> Sorry. That's a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, that's quite, yeah. Sorry, yeah. jeez. Sorry, fans. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel like. Like me and you, for example, I feel like we enjoy those little moments and take in every single detail, every single moment, and just embrace those smaller, yeah, smaller moments. Um, the de- the finer details, and I feel like it's it opens the mind a little bit and definitely takes us to a to a different place for sure. Mm. Whereas, hundred, I'm sure not every single person can sit there looking at the sky and just embrace life for five minutes you know <laughs> it's so, but how hard is it though like it is it's it a hard thing to do the so mind the mind is its own little controller you know it's got its own little switch panel yeah yeah and just goes off in tangents and brings up memories and things that you could have done better of could have done worse mm. so it, it really is hard and i i think you're right to me in the way where you say like some people can and those are the i guess the more creative people but it's it's hard for i guess some people who can't sort of detach from I feel like everyone can, mm. but it's just a matter of 
how how to share that you know yeah some people choose that choose to share that some people don't but yeah and i guess if everyone chose to share like what do you mean by sharing like in a what kind of way would they share what do you, what do you mean by that um do you mean like making a film about it or like it could be anything could be making a film could yeah. be taking a photo could be writing you know maybe a poem maybe creating a tune who knows yeah but maybe I guess just sharing some feeling or moment you know yeah yeah but uh, that, i guess sometimes that almost takes it away from the moment too that's you know? 100 percent true that's a that's an interesting um a viewpoint as well because it's like if you want to i guess immerse the presentness in that moment it's like just staring at a tree for five minutes and just understanding but, yeah. there's millions of ecosystems underneath the tree there's you know there's 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 tree leaves blossoming that li- tree's been around for 200 years like mm. how much life in one tree like you know what I mean? Like yeah. this sounds hippie as hell, but like it's true, right? Yeah. How much life in a single in a single blade of grass? Like mm. there's just life everywhere. Yeah. You and maybe know. it's not necessarily documenting that. Maybe it's just like using that thought and yeah. reimagining it, and For maybe sure. developing from that. You know? And even yeah. like letting it inform you in in life. You know, letting it just inform you in some capacity. Inspiration. Insp- like it just bring it with you for some reason, as mm. opposed to, you know, necess- I think we always have this innate need to just make and do things mm, it's like yeah. you just take it in like it pumps it becomes just a part of you a blade of grass becomes a part of you <laughs> wow <laughs> wow i know hey, wow. what a quote bro what that's a quote, a quote. Hey. i actually frothed quote it yeah. <laughs> hey we're gonna f- <laughs> q-o-t-d quote of the day <laughs> but i guess you can't not everyone's gonna be like you know in the arts or like create film or like become an artist that's why we have people working on roads and stuff like that 100%. but i guess that's creative as well 100 you need to be like need to think about how you're That's a whole another art as well. Uh, yeah, it it's true. You're right. Oh my God, that was beautiful. Wow. wow. You guys are beautiful guys and like really nice people and stuff. <laughs> I want to hang out with you guys more. Let's go have dinner after. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you guys don't do mind, it. like if you guys like want to hang out with me and stuff, I'm yeah. like not doing anything on the weekends. I'm like free most mm. weekends. It's like a little rush mate. Yeah, are you guys down? Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, nah, beautiful, man. No, nah, it's, uh, no, it's it's definitely true though, Lou. I agree. Everyone's everyone's got their own little, yeah, little creative like hang ups. <laughs> mm. Speaking of inspiration, mm. what have we uh, what have we been watching lately? Yes. Anything in particular? Ooh. Any films that are mm. coming to well, mind? Well, we've been ever since we've been back at school. Mm-hmm. It's been a bit harder to watch stuff. Yeah, uh, but we have been watching Mad Men TV show. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm frothing it, dude! So it's incredible. Yeah, we've uh, been really into that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can watch another TV show for now. Like, that has to be the show that I watch before. I have to finish that and then watch something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of TV shows, yeah. yeah you don't like sure. watching, like, I don't simultaneous like, yeah, yeah, TV shows? Yeah, I can't shows? do it. I'm not a big fan of that. Really? Mm. Yeah, so I, I, feel really, like I don't really do that much, actually. Done for? Look, I do that, but I gotta have... I can't have two, like, dramas going. I might have, like, a sitcom on the side, uh, and then I'll have, like, a heavy drama types of on. Genres. That way, I... Because I'm <laughs> such a mood watcher, you know? Like, sometimes, yeah. sometimes at the yeah, end yeah, of the true. day, I'm just like, you know what? I just feel like a lot. So I just, you know, I'll put on Seinfeld or something. But oh, probably if Seinfeld. I want, that's yeah. what I'm currently watching. Goats. At the moment, but yeah. That's great. Um, and then, yeah, drama, for instance. Yeah. Just pop that on. Beautiful. Nothing yeah. at the moment, but yeah. So Mad Men is all what we've been watching. Yeah. Um, so good. Which is amazing. I we just love, love the it. characters, man. Like, yeah. I think we have, we have a special friend that's been telling us about it. Yes. For like 50 million years, yeah. And he's like, <laughs> hey, like, Louis and Anthony. I reckon it's been about six Seven years, bro. Maybe? I reckon even more. <laughs> oh wait, when did the show no, come out? It came out know. like oh seven. I think oh seven oh eight. I could be wrong. Ah, uh, okay. So it's he's been on this on know. this Mad Men bloody, you know, just love for Mad Men since since he was like seventeen just, or eighteen. Yeah. Been Incredible. talking about it a lot. I'm like, yeah, watch it, watch it. But I never got around to it. Anyway, and then we started watching it, and now we love it. I love it so it's much. Just great acting. The set is insane. Insane. It's set in the sixties. Nice um, period. And it's good to like kind of learn about that time. Mm. I mean, that's what's pretty interesting about it. Mm. Yeah, because we um, spoke about that. What Like we spoke about the 60s, yeah. And like how mm. it was that, I guess, transition moment. Yeah. Um, Beautiful. And also, we really watched... We really How do you really watch something? <laughs> hey, hey, really hey I really watch watched it. the movie, bro. It was really, really nice and it was really, really cool. <laughs> I recommend you watch this really, 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 really movie. Okay? It's a cute movie. So we watched The Sound of Metal. Yes. yes. Man... You were you were umming and ahhing about it to me. Not umming and ahhing, sorry. You were like 
into it fully and telling me, man, you should watch it. Oh, ah, yeah. so Timmy watched it before you. Yeah, yeah. He watches it before mm, me because it's better. He's like a better person, I'm, I'm a better guy. He's a better guy. Just a yeah, better just a person. Better yeah. human. Pretty much. He's like yeah. a nicer right. person, you know. He's yeah. cool. He's fun. He's outgoing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> hey. Jeez, just go with it. Very, uh, yeah, just go with it. Complimentary today. Um, bro, that's what I do. Beautiful. Um, so, yeah, we watched Sound of Metal. Yeah. We were pretty blown away. It, mm. uh, it took me about 10 minutes after the film where it really hit. I wasn't immediately... I was hit. But then it hit me about 10 minutes later. And um, yeah, what was your take on it? I know you frothed it, dude. Yeah, you I really, really it. liked it. Yeah. I thought you it was... You were frothing it, man. It's a great movie. Um, It's just got a lot of heart in it. It's... uh, The acting's great. Um, I think what I really like about it was that, you know, the choices that the characters make are very kind of mature, even though they've had a hard past. Mm. I think that's pretty cool. Mm. Um. Because usually you see characters who go get in a hole or something. There's like a problem in their life. And if they've had a tough past, they might go back to that. Yep. Or like double in that. Mm. But I feel like there's a d- bit of a different take on that. And um, yeah, it was interesting to watch a movie about someone who's losing something that's so natural and something you really need, mostly need in life. You don't need it, but it's obviously... Fairly essential, yeah. you would say. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then he kind of wants to fix it. You know, he wants to get his hearing back. Um, and then eventually, spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Spoiler alert. Spoiler, Spoiler alert. alert. If you haven't see it, seen it, Stop. go and watch it. Come <laughs> back. Come back at whatever, how many whatever the time this is. Yeah. Continue. So yeah, it's about like kind of living with things that you've lost or that you you know like if you lose your hearing yeah you obviously want to try and fix that and there's ways just from watching this movie that you can kind of go about it but it might not fix it so you kind of have to learn to live with it yeah um which is pretty cool yeah a lot of heart in the film yeah it was a very like emotionally heavy heavy, yeah really like gut-wrenching you know yeah one of those ones but yeah I loved it. I what did you, what did you sort of, what was your, like, I know it sounds a bit like wanky, but like, what was your takeaway from the film? I feel like, <laughs> question. That's a great <laughs> question. <laughs> hey, wow. <laughs> He's thinking about this. <laughs> hey, I'm not hey. prepared. Oh my God, <laughs> I, got, I got one of the hosts stumped. Oh my God, what kind of host <laughs> oh is this, bro? God. Are you serious, bro? <laughs> what are you doing, bro? <laughs> Come on, Timothy, please. Please. Well, look, I'll just go straight to that final scene where... Yeah. Mm. He's, you know, he's strived to, um, I guess, mechanically, like, fix this mm. hearing loss. But then, and this whole film is just about through this struggle of him trying to, you know, whether he's meant to fix it or accept it, you know, yeah. this back and forth. And I feel like just that last scene where he just turns it and just embraces the mm. silence. Yeah. It's like, he it's couldn't poetry. have ended it. Any, yeah. It's a good point. Like, he it's kind a good of... Point wrestles with the idea exactly which is quite stressful i would yeah. assume <laughs> um but yeah that's that's pretty cool and I, yeah just that just that mindset about being able to accept it you know and mm. just embrace whatever it is that you yeah. that's happened to you or whatever situation you're in that you you know you can't really change i mean you can but maybe it's not exactly what and you need you yeah know? And I guess yourself. we all go through things like that in life. Yeah. It could be an injury or it could be something personal, whatever it is. Exactly. Um, you kind of just have to go on and, you know, try and deal with it as much as you can. Yeah. 100%, be man. positive about it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what a, Come yeah, what an interesting... No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> Making some money off people, <laughs> scam people. All good. No stress. <laughs> ah, no stress. So uh, what I liked specifically was it made me think about like how when you have something and it gets taken away... Mm. it's a lot more impactful than if you've never had it and you never get it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, if that makes sense. So like, if, if you've never had hearing, I think so some of the characters in the film were actually deaf. They were deaf characters. Yeah, they were, yeah. Because I think the director, Darius Mata, specifically wanted to have that authenticity about it, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. So it made me think of like how those characters would never really think about what it means to hear. So mm. it, would, it wouldn't be anything. You, they wouldn't be trying to get implants or anything. Maybe they would, but I think their perspective towards that being a, a, a loss or a, 
I guess, if you want to say disability, mm. it wouldn't be as hardcore as it was for the Riz Ahmed character yep. who actually had it and knew, what, knew the sensation of what that felt like. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's such an intense sense to hear, you know, hearing his yeah. music film. Like, it's such a connective thing. Mm. All your senses are, but like, yeah. you know, hearing as much as any other one is so important, right? And it's like, if you've never had it, I guess you never really yearn for it. But when you lose it, the desperation I could I could feel it so much you know I really yeah. felt the desperation yeah to what what would mean to lose something so a part of you, you know? yeah even this yeah. idea of him actually uh you know this idea of embracing it you know that when you actually do when you did have it and then it got taken away mm. and you know were you were you grateful for that Ex- that's the, that's yeah, the question exactly. for having it in the first place that's you know? the question man you don't know how good it is till it's gone. And um, it was pretty cool at the start of the film how like they were focusing on the mm. sounds and then like when he wakes up at some point you don't hear anything. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. I thought. Are you talking pretty, about pretty like the Yeah, like the, the kettle the or kettle, the, the like, push ups. Yeah, or driving, yeah. Uh, you hear cars going past, uh, you see you hear people walking and talking and What was interesting was that with the sound design I read about it that it wasn't um it wasn't actually done in sort of like from his perspective, the sound. It was like they showed him, but it was more of just like an ambience of what he's listening, but it yeah. wasn't actually his viewpoint. And wow. then you don't actually see that till that very last shot mm. when it's just dead silent. You see him and you just, you feel what he's feeling. Yeah. And yeah, that's a really interesting take. Yeah, oh, for the sure. sound design was unreal. Oh, yeah. was so good. I like, I love that character, the, the man who was running the, the, I guess the, hearing the, the, the community yeah, community yeah, community, yeah. The hearing, yeah. sorry the non-hearing community the deaf community whatever it was yeah yeah his character man he that there was that, that scene where they where he went back after his surgery you know he's paid like 40 grand whatever he paid yeah and the guy is like get out you know the way he yeah. just how how strongly he felt towards not viewing it as a deficit yes you know yeah that 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 hit that was hitting yeah that was it was hitting different <laughs> hitting different no that but was, it hit, that right? was good yeah he was a great character oh incredible he was like his mentor almost and um yeah okay i'm pretty sure he won like an like one he won like a award for that role really yeah he, he he's got i think he's got a couple of non-noms for that role actually mm. but i don't think yeah i don't i don't know if it's going to pick up any steam towards oscar mm. season or anything but it's good to see that recognized mm. quite an independent film right yeah where yeah, was it was sure. it on prime Yep, Prime. Amazon Prime. That's right. Amazon yeah. Prime. Amazon if you want to watch, yeah, plug shameless plug. I mean, we're gonna get paid for them. I don't know why I'm plugging them. I just <laughs> no. want to say sh- I've heard people say shameless plug before in like other like stuff. Uh, yeah. So I want to be a part people. of that. I'm a copy. Just I have yourself. no personality. Be original. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, this is a nice cute movie. Uh, came out in 2019, featuring Riz Ahmed and what's her name? The girl Liz. Olivia Cook. Uh, Olivia, Olivia Cook. Olivia that's Cook, right. Yeah. What I was thinking of the other one. Anyway, her name's Lou in the film. Lou. That's right. I was like the hours got mixed up. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice movie about um your senses. Yep. <laughs> it's fun. We There's love this it. quote. Go for it. That I uh, that I found that was really interesting by the uh, director. Mm. So I'll read it out, and you guys tell me what you think. Ooh. Um, here we go. I've dealt with times of real darkness in my life, and I think what's amazing about darkness and these monsters that live inside us is that in a life of movement and constant placating. Is that it? Placating. Placating. Wow, that's really bad English. <laughs> <laughs> hey, seen that so in my life we are smart, anyway. cute boys. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey, you're and a teacher. You should, what does it mean, bro? Hey. <laughs> yeah, hey, what does it mean? It means so much, but yet so little. Ooh. Yes, okay. <laughs> all right. Is that in a life of movement and constant placating and distraction and all these many things that we fill our lives with, we can keep those monsters at bay, but they're still there. The only way we know that we have dealt with them is when we sit. I think remarkably that's what this time right now is doing with all of us and for all of us. It's really asking us, how are you with monsters? And can you sit? Can you be in stillness? And I'm challenged right now. It's challenging. Wow. Beautiful. That was, that's a great quote. That's a great quote from a guy who's definitely got through some stuff, man. Jeez. But I, one thing, can I, have, can I have one gripe with that? Yeah. I don't like it. the fact that it refers to it as monsters. Yes. I think okay. that's a, that's a, I think that's not, not, I wouldn't say it's an issue, mm-hmm. but like my, 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 my sort of annoyance with that is it's such a negative way to view it, you know? 
lacking compassion and stuff. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't necessarily call them monsters, you know. I think all these things inside of us ha- need a home. They're like little orphans. They need like places to, to be, to mm. come, to go, mm-hmm. you know. And I think when you, I guess, uh, label them as monsters, and maybe it works for some people, but I think in a, in a way it, it reinforces a sort yeah. of an image. When you think of a monster, you know, what it's, it's like, like a negative scary. connotation, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, it's like a negative it's connotation. It's like a negative thing. You're right. But um, yeah, and it's like you have to get rid of it. Yeah. And I feel like when you think about it, like the movie doesn't talk about that it mm. kind of talks about living with it correct mm. correct but kind of obviously if it's something really bad you want to try and fix it it's not saying like if you've got an issue you don't like talk about it or something you don't just sit there and like mm. cope with it yeah um but you can live with it and get help mm-hmm. but i think the, the overall gist of the quote is incredible though. yeah I, I love the way it's worded and especially in the time we went through last year i think we had a we had an intense yeah, we experience in Melbourne. Melbourne was in yeah insanely intense experience. Mm. A lot of I don't thought. Know what lot it of was thinking. like in the other countries? I know ours was pretty full on the lockdown. Ours was intense. I don't think America's has ever been as bad. Has it ever been as bad as us? I'm not even I'm sure. Not sure. What what the the as in the like. lockdown. As in the lockdown. Yeah. yeah. I'm not too sure. I yeah, know the their restrictions were. Yeah. But, but yeah, ours was it was it was bad. It was intense. Yeah. It was hardcore. But yeah, yeah, like which the, is great because now we oh, can actually go and do stuff. For sure, for sure. It was definitely <laughs> definitely served the purpose. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, lo- I love that. That's beautiful. Mm. And nice for digging that up too. Um, yeah, he's really prepared for this podcast. But I think he summed it up mostly good host. Really well. He did. I think that's spot on. Like we would just kinda have to sit at home, you know, entertain ourselves as best we can. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can't always be doing something so mm. you need to sit with yourself you do exactly and think about your life and all those things that are happening and how many times do we speak about this like people just don't want to sit with themselves yeah it's such and a it's not easy it's pretty scary sometimes for yeah. some people embracing but that silence is definitely a tough thing to do yeah because you know people have different experiences in life mm. i think sometimes we can be quick to judge or like not think about that not be empathetic yeah 100 um, percent it's like, I don't know, like teaching for six years. Like, oh, you're six years now. Nice. Six, seven? That's six a long years. time. Six yeah. or seven, yeah. Nice. Well, full time. Killer. Yeah. Like, each kid is so different. And, like, and where I work, you know, it's a bit of a low socioeconomic kind of area. Mm. And you kind of, as you go along with your teaching career, you kind of understand why kids are a certain way, you know, uh, because, you know, they've had something happen in their life or. It could be whatever it is. They're a certain way because of how they've grown up. So I think, yeah, like sitting down and thinking about stuff, like people have gone through harder stuff than maybe I have or you have, so on and so forth. So I think it's, um, yeah, it can be very hard. Which, yeah, it would have been really challenging if you've had some you mm. know, demons in your life. Or For sure. Mm-hmm. Some things that you've experienced that are quite, have a big effect on you. Mm. So... Yeah, it's a great quote. It's a beautiful quote. Beautiful quote. <laughs> nice, nice digging, Timothy. I like it. Uh, probably hey. wasn't hard to dig. All you probably had to write was Darius Marta quotes for Sandra Metal. <laughs> but like, nice job. <laughs> you're you're proficient with Google. Give you one nice big cute tick. <laughs> beautiful huh? man. For Thanks Timmy, yeah, uh, nice man. tick. Love it. First big tick for the year for Timothy. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Maybe we can do the thing for like ongoing podcasts. We get like we, we aim to get this one tick. tick from each other. And like a validation could be like a nice, a nice cute tick. I like that. You know okay, what I mean? That's pretty interesting. That. Really interesting. So yeah. if I ever say something that's worth like. Do you noting? have different types of ticks? Like, there's a cute one. Yeah, it was like, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. So, we have <laughs> yeah, types yeah, yeah. Of different like genres. Dude, yeah. categories of ticks. Categories. Bro, different types of ticks. Let's do that. That sounds insane to me. <laughs> yeah. Category. That was a cute tick. Uh, that, that was a cute? That was a cute Ooh. one. So, there might be like a. I'm sure um, cute. I don't know. Was it cute? Was it cute? It's it's like no, it probably deep. wasn't. I just said cute for no reason. It's like a. It's pretty like. I'd say a wise tick. A it's wise like a, tick. a wise tick. Sure. That sounds like a disease. You got like a wise ticks on you, bro. Stop, Timothy, stop. Anyway, we'll work on this tick thing. But um, no, that's that's well said. Maybe Definitely. we should talk about how like we experience, like how our experience was like during lockdown. Yeah, like in terms of us being creative, like I didn't have an impact on, like yeah. Look, I wasn't too bad actually, because um, yeah. I still I could still work and everything. I was yeah. I was training a lot. Obviously, because, you know, soccer had yeah. pause at the moment. You guys so are running like animals. Doing a lot of running, doing yeah, a lot right. of working out. Keeping fit. It's good to clear the head, you know. Um, yeah. 
but yeah, I was I was just working heaps to be honest, just uh, making the most of it. Well, because well, I, I was definitely one of the lucky ones to in my Agreed. perspective. Same here. Working, eh? um, yeah, we, we kept, kept working as well, which was great. Albeit from home, but yeah, were you still going still in? Still working. Huh? We still get into into the store to work. We still going into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we were nice. still running and everything. But uh, yeah. So for me, during lockdown, it was a mix of work, mix of working out, and just I did do it. Did yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty jacked. To be <laughs> yeah, you um, look pretty jacked, man. Yeah, um, those biceps. And biceps. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> triceps. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and I I did do a, mar- a movie marathon as well. Where I hundred hundred dude, day, I remember that hundred days in a row before. a movie every hundred days. Yeah, I got to a hundred. Remember this? Um, and yeah, yeah watch your stories. You a, new, a new movie every what day. Dog, so watch that your was stories. that was uh, that was super <laughs> intense. Don't don't do it. Trust me, it's very draining. Really, dude, that sounds super. like a lot of work. It is. It's such a big films in a row. Like I've been wanting to do something like that, like consistently watching a movie every day. I got to about thirty. I'm like, this is rough. So I sort of picked. Dude, it. that just sounds stressful. What did you just feel drained from it? Yeah, or you, you have to, to like, movie. yeah, like some of the yeah. day, like watching a film every single day, just being in, in it, and especially if they're emotionally heavy as well, mm. it is pretty draining, but that's why you have to be smart and sort of break it up with, you know, yeah, sure. the funny ones, the chill mm. ones, the drama, the... Yeah, you gotta watch, yeah, we went through a bit of a rom-com phase. Oh, yeah. Watch Clueless oh, for the first time, it was there's incredible. There's nothing wrong yeah. with it. They're I love great. Clueless. So good. What Clueless. a film. So good. I love that one. Yeah, I frothed mm. it. I thought, I just loved it so much. It was so funny. Yeah. It was so effortlessly good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what a... It's a good movie. It's fun. A, yeah. yeah. What it's fun you get to watch rom-coms, man. You do. Yeah. 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 Rom-coms are fire. Anyway, back to lockdown. What did you guys feel? Well, I don't know. I was it was fine. Yeah. It, was, it was a bit hard to not separate work from home, but it was what it was. It was just annoying. Not Obviously, this is every single person in the whole entire world in Melbourne. Um, yeah, uh, having to not do things, but mm. we had, the, we had the, yeah. <laughs> the big ring of steel, which was challenging, <laughs> you know. But, and oh, what, what, okay, what, what really freaking annoyed me was everyone became an expert in, in yeah. disease and vaccine. And That's probably the worst politics. Oh, yes. It was just, uh, 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 it was last year, it was, was just dusty as in terms of everyone <laughs> just like arguing on Facebook. I took a break. I deleted my Instas for a while and Facebooks and stuff. Yeah. I just couldn't take. It was pretty toxic. Wow. The, the toxicity. Yeah. yeah like everyone, much. like what are you doing people? Mm. Like stop. <laughs> yeah. Stop arguing. Mm. We get it. You like Dan, you don't like Dan, you don't like lockdown, you like, like, like <laughs> you know, it was just, it was intense. Right. Louis? A quick one? Um, one minute? One minute. Smash right. it out. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, no, I thought he was pretty intense. I thought I was more like a homebody, but then I realized that over time he was pretty challenging. Yeah. And now I feel like I don't really want to be at home as much. Yeah. I'd rather be out doing stuff because mm. we've been at home for so long. Working yeah. from home. Is that a minute? <laughs> that was 13, 13 <laughs> seconds, 14, 15, That's pretty good. 16, oh, 17, 18, 19, so yeah, we're 20, very lucky 20, in 21, Melbourne. 20. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, was that a count? That was that was twenty two seconds. Down. I was, was very confused. What kind of host are you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to host. My first host, bro. I'm learning. Confused. I'm learning on the job, what yeah. That? <laughs> Guys, I'm learning on the job. Leave me Dude, alone. Come on, come bro. Right. Please. Seriously. How's a cross? Are we gonna have crosses as well? Ooh, crosses. Tank crosses. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, it kind of feeds into the whole teacher like thing too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. That was okay, that was my first cross. That was my first red X. Yeah. That's first red X. Anyway, guys, we are approaching the hour mark, which is. The end of the first episode, unfortunately. Yes. Um, I just want to talk forever. I know. I just want to, I just want to keep going. I just want to keep talking. Keep talking. But uh, no, thank you guys for joining me on the couch. Louis, thank you very much. No for yeah, thank you, Louis. Thanks for having us. You guys In were fantastic hosts for your first episode. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Thank need you a, very much. Need a bit more work. But I mean, yeah, yeah you I know. get there. You I get agree. Bro, we Definitely. need a lot of work. <laughs> we do, man. But it's life. You, know, you learn on the job, huh? No, nah, it's good. You learn together it's as nice. a team together, huh? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> The boys, <laughs> the boys are. The hey, we'll boys. probably be seeing you around, Louis. You know, you we live will. here. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna no. have you back on. I'll yeah. pop my head in here and You'll there. We'll be popping yeah. in here and there when we uh, talk when to When you people. guys want me to, definitely. It's up to the boss. The boss is like a bit of a, is a bit All of a right. dictator. Don't so cross the boss. Don't serious? cross the boss. I said something before. He like punched me on like maybe the camera caught it. Wow. He's low key as freak. You gotta say it, mine. Anyway, guys, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, yeah, we'll be uh, posting this very soon on um, Apple. Spotify, wherever you listen. YouTube. Is it YouTube? And we will we will YouTube, be Yes, YouTube, we YouTube. we are filming. We are filming uh, the show. So if you want to look at uh three gorgeous young blokes. Oh, three beautiful I mean, boys. Three beautiful Why boys. Who can literally seriously. change your life. You know, pretty much, I would watch yeah. these guys. Change your life. They're pretty good people and stuff. <laughs> they like are. they're fun and stuff. You I know mean, what I mean? And stuff. Yeah. Fun and stuff. They're cool yeah. and stuff, you know, stuff. Like, you know. Like 
yeah, like good fun people and stuff who yeah. like things that are cool, <laughs> you know, to me. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Much love to you all. And we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.